Today, we have uh, the privilege of having with us in Pensacola the Peace Pilgrim. Would you begin, uh, Peace Pilgrim, by telling us what your pilgrimage is and why you're in Pensacola at this time? Well, of course, I'm in Pensacola because I was invited to come to Pensacola uh, by the Pensacola Junior College and other people. And I'm speaking, of course, at the college. Now, a pilgrim, of course, is on a journey with a purpose, not just wandering idly. A pilgrimage can be to a place or for a thing, and mine happens to be for a thing. Now, it covers the whole peace picture. It's for peace. Peace among nations, peace among groups, even peace with our environment. But most always I talk about peace among individuals and the very, very important inner peace. I talk about that the most. Now, my subject is really human potential. Most people only scratch the surface of their real potential. They have no idea what they're capable of. I started out uh, 25 years ago on this pilgrimage, on the back of my short tunic it says 25,000 miles on foot for peace. And that makes a lot of contacts for me. On the front it gives my name, Peace Pilgrim. And in 1964 I had finished counting uh, the 25,000 miles and I stopped counting, although I didn't stop uh, walking. I have no visible means of support. This is part of a pilgrimage. I haven't got any money, and I don't even accept any money, and I don't belong to any organization, and I don't own anything except what you see. This is me and my only earthly possession sitting in this chair. I walk until given shelter, fast until given food. I don't even ask. It's given without asking. You know, people are good. There's a spark of good in everybody, no matter how deeply it may be buried. And, of course, a pilgrim walks not only prayerfully, but as an opportunity to contact people. My short tunic uh, makes my contacts for me. People are curious or interested. They stop and talk. And it's the kindest way to make contacts. It's the most effective way to make contacts. Let them approach you. And I often have an opportunity to share my peace message with them, which says in a single sentence, this is the way of peace. Overcome evil with good and falsehood with truth and hatred with love. Good sound psychology. Whenever it's used, it works. Mm -hmm. Uh, when did you start your pilgrimage? January 1st of 1953. And where does it take you to? At the 50 states, the 10 Canadian provinces, parts of Mexico. I'm on my sixth pilgrimage route. Well, I actually finished my sixth pilgrimage route in Pensacola. Uh, and then head for California, mm -hmm. where I start a seventh pilgrimage route in the early spring. What led you to decide upon this pilgrimage? Anything? And when did oh, you... I had a 15-year preparation period. Yes, it wasn't in uh, walking or speaking, it was mm -hmm. inner preparation. Mm -hmm. My preparation for the pilgrimage began in earnest about 40 years ago, uh, when I came out of my meaningless life of money and things and started to live to give instead of to get. At that point, my life blossomed out. I attained the great blessing of good health, it's wonderful. I haven't had a, an ache or a pain or a cold or a headache for 40 years. And from that time on, I have known that my life work was going to be work for peace. And from that time on, I had, um, I was engaged in another growing up. Now, I had already done the physical growing up long ago. And I had done the mental growing up. I had sufficient uh, knowledge to get along and I could make my own decisions. I had done the emotional growing up. I could get along with people and with myself. But at that point, 40 years ago, I started what I have come to call a spiritual growing up or a psychological growing up. It takes you from the self-centered life or the life governed by the self-centered nature into the life governed by 
the nature which is centered in the good of the whole, which sees you as a part of the whole and works for the good of the whole, which sees that you're a cell in the body of humanity, that every cell, every human being has, well, equal uh, importance, equal potential, although in varied stages of growth because we choose how much growing we do, and a job to do in the total scheme of things. That was my preparation for the pilgrimage. It took 15 years. And, you know, my hair had turned to silver uh, when I started out on my pilgrimage. Oh, I can remember my friends simply thought I had taken leave of my senses when I told them I was going to walk across the country, which I did the first year. But, you know, I don't walk on the energy of youth. It was gone when I started. I walk on that endless, amazing energy which comes with having done the psychological or spiritual growing up with having found inner peace. I was going to ask the question about all this energy and enthusiasm, enthusiasm you have. I'm aware that you've spoken many time, times on campus this week, and many students have been... Uh, amazed at how much energy and enthusiasm you have. Where does it come from? Well, of course, it never runs out. You see, you feel plugged in, and it flows through you. Well, it comes from the source of all energy. Uh, being a religious woman, I would say it comes from God. But uh, you see, there are conditions for plugging in. You know, I was walking out of a town, and a truck driver stopped to talk with me. He said, I heard you say over the air something about that endless energy. And I just want to tell you that I had it one time. I said, yes, that's right. Sometimes under special circumstances, it does become available. He said, well, I was marooned in a town by a flood. And I got so bored that I finally offered to help. And I got interested in getting people out. And he said, I worked without eating. I worked without sleeping. And I wasn't tired. But he said, I don't have it anymore. And I said, well... Uh, what are you working for now? He said, money. I said, that should be quite incidental. You have that endless energy only insofar as you're working for the good of the whole. As soon as you start working for your selfish little self, it's gone. That's the secret of it. In this world, you're given as you give. Right. Well, are you, uh, I know the students are uh, amazed at your um, hitchhiking and walking so much, and they wonder about the dangers. And they're concerned a bit about uh, you're being in danger and doing so much hitchhiking and walking. I don't feel I'm in any way in danger because, you see, I have no fear. One of the things we're just coming to realize is that we create through thought. We constantly create through thought. We create our inner conditions. We hope to create the conditions around us. Now, if you're fearful, what will happen? You will attract the things you fear. I fear nothing and expect only good. So to me, only good comes. But then, of course, I'm always thinking about the best that could happen and all the good things that I want to see happen because those are the things I want to emphasize. 